Meet Michael. Michael is a motorcyclist. This is Michael's track bike. He doesn't have a street bike right now, unfortunately. No. He's getting one soon, though. In between. All right, Michael. So, 10 questions for uh, Bikers, Bikes, and Bards. This being the Bard portion of the video. All right. All right. And you know what a Bard is, right? Uh, isn't that a, like a musical kind of... Uh... It's a story. Remember Shakespeare? Shakespeare yeah. was called the Bard. Right. The stories are these told. So, okay. this is how we, uh, we tell our motorcycle stories. So, question number one for you. Are you ready for this one? Yeah. What was your very first motorcycle experience and how old were you? You know, it's funny is my first motorcycle experience was actually on this bike before I owned it. Um, so the guy that owned this motorcycle before me is a good friend of mine. Um, and I was not wearing a helmet and I was sitting on the back of the bike and it was back when this was a, a street bike. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty terrifying because with all that weight on the rear, the thing was wheeling pretty quick and was extraordinarily dangerous but that was uh, the very first time and I think I was 22 or 23 at the time well wow, okay yeah. all right question number two what was your very first motorcycle that you owned very first motorcycle I owned or was given or was given my first motorcycle was a uh, 2013 uh, CBR 250R it was a little street bike single cylinder not a whole lot of power um, that was an absolutely fantastic bike I, I kind of regret selling it who first taught you to ride a motorcycle? Uh, the uh, the school that um, um, I actually ended up teaching at is the school that I learned uh, learned how to ride at. So I was a learn to ride VC uh, from uh, uh, Larry Misman, who's the owner. Um, so I took the class there, took the basic rider course, um, and then fell in love with motorcycling from there, and I've never looked back. I ended up teaching there a few years later, which was even a cool coincidence. All right. All right. Question number four: What did you? Why did you choose your current motorcycle? Now I know it hasn't arrived yet. It hasn't so you, arrived yet. You can yeah. tell us that story, but <laughs> why did you choose what you are about to buy or uh, you were in the process of buying? Yeah, so um, uh, so my the, I have a as, a, as James said earlier, I don't have a street bike right now, but I have a, uh, a 2021 BMW R1250 GS Adventure uh, on order. It should be here next week. Um, big reason I chose it is I had a, uh, a Yamaha, or 2019 Yamaha Tracer up until about two or three weeks ago, uh, which I sold. Um, you know, I, I was on a, a long camping trip with my girlfriend, so we had, uh, you know, full luggage, um, top case, side cases, the whole nine yards. We did a 10 day, 10 day camping trip all the way from, uh, from where I'm at in the Ventura County area, all the way to uh, Reedsport, Oregon. And we camp along the way, and, and there was a moment when we were leaving Bend, um, we were on a highway heading south, and um, you know, every mile or so, there'd be a fire road somewhere on the highway. And I was looking at this bike, and I I tried to ride the tracer off road a couple times with uh, you know just getting into campsites, and it is it was just god awful. Um, so I really realized that you know I need a bike that can do uh, the long distance touring stuff that I want to do, as well um, as doing light off roading. Uh, I'm not obviously going to be doing any kind of BMX or, or, or sorry, uh, motocross or anything like that, but BMX. BMX. <laughs> wrong, wrong That's uh, a different channel. Yeah, do the you know doing the kind of light off road stuff that, right. that you would do on a on a GS. So um, after a lot of back and forth and and um, yeah, a lot of shopping around and riding every bike that I can think of. Did you watch a lot of YouTube videos? Watch a lot of YouTube videos. <laughs> on reviews. Yeah, I've ridden a lot of adventure bikes. Uh, I actually just rode the uh, 2021. Um, Ducati Multistrada V4S, right. uh, which is a spectacular motorcycle, um, but you know it was it was less what I was looking to do. Um, the GS Adventure has uh, the kind of gas capacity and the range that I was looking for. But the engine is spectacular, uh, and a big selling point is a shaft drive. You know, the, the not having to do chain maintenance ever again sounds really appealing to me because hmm. um, I, I you know on the on the trip I was on I had to have an entire tool set. With just to be able to do chain maintenance, chain adjustments. Uh, in fact, actually, I can show you. I had to specially, uh, specialty buy this 27 mil uh, tiny breaker bar and um, axle bolt just so that I could do chain adjustments on my tracer uh, while I was on there because we put about just under 4,000 miles on the, wow. on the thing. So we had to adjust the chain a couple times, which Without this is impossible. So you know, right. not needing this, not needing the the wrenches to be able to adjust anything. Um, 
and not Yamaha. not having to find a Yamaha dealership somewhere on the road right. that can take care now of it. Now I gotta find a BMW dealership. Now you have to find a BMW um, dealership. But yeah, so you know, not having to do chain maintenance is a big one and the GS you know, meets mm. all of the criteria that I have for, for a street bike with light off roads. So nothing against Italian bikes, you just I, prefer no. German. Oh no, I mean <laughs> don't, don't get me wrong, the, the V four motor is masterpiece but right. <laughs> I really enjoyed the GS cool all right question number five well you know what? let's go back just a second you mentioned your camping trip yes is that the video you sent me yeah of the camp so can I add that as a link yeah, if someone's yeah, interested absolutely. in seeing you riding thousands of miles <laughs> on a tracer yeah we have a, it's on YouTube um, or Vimeo I on YouTube I can I can send you the direct all right we'll add that to the link yeah, yeah. so if anybody's interested in seeing Michael on his uh, Trace to camping with his girlfriend. We've yeah, got a video actually, up. Then why not? With, uh, with that's called that's called cross promotion. Yeah, cross promotion. <laughs> no, it's it's also with my uh, my girlfriend's best friend and her boyfriend, who's a buddy of mine who owns a uh, who's, I think it's a 2018 multi strata. Um, okay. So we had a multi and my tracer, and you know the four of us did this this whole big camping trip, which is pretty mega. Sweet. All right. Next question number five. How often do you ride? Uh, when I have a street bike, uh, almost every day. Okay. Uh, right now, I obviously haven't ridden in about two or three weeks but um uh, i'd find every excuse you know i have a i have a new car sitting right out there and um since uh coronavirus started um actually a good indication of that is when coronavirus started i picked up the yamaha tracer in march of 2020 and then once i sold it um right now it's it's uh, actually march of 2021 right now i sold it in late february uh, so less than one year i put around uh, 11,500 miles on it bought it brand new so Some writing. I write it I write it absolutely everywhere um, awesome. so as much as possible okay question number six if you could take a long road trip on a motorcycle mm -hmm. where would you go and who would you take it with and we're saying anybody celebrity <laughs> celebrity dead or alive I see Mark on the other side pointing to himself um, <laughs> where would I go that's a really where would you go and who would you want to go with you don't have to take anybody it could be just that's true um I won't say anybody specific because I can't. You know, I would just want to take the trip with, with just some good mates. You know, a couple of couple of good friends um, who also those, ride. Who also ride, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to have them bicycle behind me. Uh, but as far as where, you know, I, I've seen uh, I've seen a lot of trips of people doing from the tip of the Dalton Highway in Alaska all the way down through the Americas uh, and to the tip of Patagonia. Um, I mean, the long way down. The long way down, effectively. There yeah. you go. Um, so maybe you'd like to go with you and McGregor. Yeah, or I mean, Charlie Gorman. Oh my God! Yeah, I would, <laughs> I would, I would, I'm not. Uh, you know, I'm not really into guys, but I would consider it for you and McGregor. Um, but yeah, it's it's. I, I would do a, a long trip like that just to to really see the sights. Awesome. All righty. Okay, so question number seven: If you could only own one motorcycle for the rest of your life, what would it be? <laughs> Maybe you're about to own it. Maybe I'm about to own it. Yeah, it's it's you know it's funny is um, a lot of the people that I talk to that that own GSs you know I'm obviously about 20 years younger than, than most of them, uh, but they seem to be under this impression that if you ride long enough that you get a GS you just end up sticking with that. Uh, so you know who knows maybe the gs is going to be my my forever bike. right now at this point right in your now life, it's my forever bike yeah you're a, G a gs 12 until until i get really old you know right, and, cool. you know get around your age and, and <laughs> get, a, Ooh, get a gold wing awesome. <laughs> yeah question number eight do you have a favorite motorcycle youtuber or channel that you follow yeah it has to be Fortnite. Fortnite. yeah the he i i think you know the the bar is set so low for motorcycle youtubers um you know, you see even some of the big names, you know, they do the generic, uh, which bike is better, which bike is best, and they have this, you know, the, these arbitrary comparisons between bikes that don't really mean anything until you actually ride the bike. Um, but I think what Fort9 is doing, uh, the guy, I think the guy runs his name, Ryan, um, he's going out and he's actually going with introspectives into more of the, the culture and some of the engineering and, and talking about really just talking about motorcycling, less about the actual act of motorcycling, but everything surrounding it. Right. Uh, which I think is far more interesting to watch on, on, a, on a YouTube platform than it is to, to listen to, you know, generic um, motorcycle journalist number 47 talk about the, the you know, 2030, uh, <laughs> you know, BMW 15,000R or whatever it might be. Right. Cool. Question number nine. What's the scariest thing that has ever happened to you while riding a motorcycle? 
Does crashing count? Crashing counts. Okay. If, if that's the scariest thing. Oh, actually, it wasn't that scary. Um, you know what the scariest thing did actually? The, did your life flash before your eyes? No, you know, it's, it's funny. Is it, the crashes I've had on track have actually not really been that scary. Um, so I've been fortunate in that regard. The scariest moment for me was actually, um, it was uh, that on during that camping trip I told you about. Um, there was a moment where, you know, we're fully loaded. So I had uh, myself, my girlfriend, uh, all of our luggage. So we had two big 48-liter uh, side cases on either side, a 50-liter top case, and then bags strapped to the top. So we were carrying a lot of weight. Fortunately for me, my girlfriend doesn't really weigh much. Um, otherwise, we would have been really screwed. Um, but we're going through, through Oregon. It must have been on hour five or six um, of that day. And there was a, um, a decreasing radius right-hand corner. Uh, that I wasn't ready for, and I, I didn't do my due diligence and properly, um, you know, properly map it out uh, like I should be, and I know better. Um, and while that, you know, I started to go a little bit wide because of that, uh, and I wanted you came into the corner too hot, a little too hot, and I didn't uh, steer uh, enough. I right. didn't, I didn't apply enough counter steering to to be able to get through it in the radius that I had. Um, so that was that was scary in and of itself, but the the part that really stuck out was that there was a big ass SUV uh, that was coming in that if I uh, if I didn't take corrective action I would have gone straight into um, and you know crashing on my own is one thing um, but having the added responsibility of having my girlfriend on the back was was after the fact I had to sit down with myself and realize that, right. that, that I mean it was less scared for me it was more just scared that that you know because of my negligence I could have gotten her seriously hurt or, or killed right and as instructors we got to teach people to Adjust their riding based on the weight. Yep. Adjust their suspension on their bikes based oh, yeah. on the weight. If they've got a pillion passenger or if they're running big baggers with a lot of gear in the back, it changes the handling of the motorcycle. And don't get lazy. And don't get lazy. No. Right, right. Awesome. Okay, well, glad we're okay. you're okay. Yeah, me too. <laughs> you didn't go down, right? Keep your crashes to the track. Yeah, yeah. In your full leather gear yeah. where there's an ambulance parked. And an ambulance ready to go and I've got the airbags. Right? Yeah. All right, final question. What was your most, what is your most favorite thing about motorcycle riding? Why do you do it, man? It's 32, 39 times more likely to die on a bike than in a car. 36. 36 times? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it's a lot. <laughs> All right, let's leave it at that. It's a lot more yeah. dangerous than driving a car. Um, Why do you do it? What, what's the most favorite thing for you that does it? You know, for me, it's a big part of it is, uh, um, you know, I, I have issues with, uh, with, ADHD, and I always have, and I'm always the kind of person that is kind of going from place to place to place to place. Um, when I started riding, I realized that it was like really the only time that I was able to uh, have my, my mind just kind of shut up. Um, so it's, it's, you know, an extremely, extremely peaceful thing for me um, because, you know, I, I, there's something about riding that, you know, just gels with my brain uh, and makes it so that it's, it's, you know, it's, it's like a day trip to the spa. It's the most relaxing thing that I can think of. Even when you're it's, on, it's track. yoga for your mind. It's, it's yoga and for, body. Yeah, it's yoga for the mind and the right. body. And and you know, pairing that up with with track racing, you know, I'm a huge fan of of you know constant improvement in in my riding. So finding something I'm deficient at and improving and improving and improving. Um, and track riding is a fantastic way for me to to be able to attack that. So doing every single lap and and um, thinking about what I've done. Um, how I approached each corner, how the braking felt, how the acceleration felt, what I could have done better, and trying to apply that to the next lap, um, and you know, using stuff like data loggers and uh, uh, lap timers to be able to to get objective uh, data on on you know what is what I have done and what is being uh, what I could be better in the future. Um, yeah, I, I think it's really just a combination of, of those two. Are the forcing you to focus, yeah, forcing that concentration. It, it really is. Yeah, it's forcing me to focus. Right. Because I, in my day to day life, you know, in my career, my job is very, uh, very staccato. So it's a lot of this, a lot of this, a lot of this. But I'm never really sitting down in front of something for, for you know, even ten to fifteen minutes at a time. It's all very all over the place. And, and in my career, that's beneficial to me. So this is basically the equivalent of taking Adderall or Ritalin. It really is, yeah. And it's Although a tablet's than... probably cheaper than the yeah. amount of money you put into these Fucking motorcycles. <laughs> yeah, the drugs are cheaper, but this is a lot more fun. It's a lot more uh, fun. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being part of this. Thank you for allowing me to interview you. No problem. I wish you considerable <laughs> and consistent and constant safe riding in the future. Thanks, mate. And uh, good luck in your new home. Thank you.
That's awesome. 